Hi, I'm Marie Hopkinson. I'm a herbalist and an acupuncturist. And today's video, we're gonna talk about damp heat. What is damp heat? And this is gonna be part of a little series. I'm talking about what kind of foods should I use if I have damp heat and what is damp heat? So today's video, we're just gonna talk about what is damp heat and what is the difference between damp heat and dampness? So um, the main difference between those two is just the added bonus of heat instead of dampness. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the TCM idea of damp heat and the, the treatment of it in traditional Chinese medicine and in the style of herbs, that herbal medicine that I practice, classical Chinese medicine, what we think about damp heat. Dampness is a very common, a very, very common um, diagnosis that's given out by Chinese medicine practitioners, right? And so if you're on this channel and you're a patient of a herbalist or an acupuncturist and someone has said to you, you've got damp heat or you've read in the books the symptoms and you think, I've got damp heat. So what are the symptoms of damp heat? How do you know that you've got damp heat? Well, the main one is with your bowels, right? So if your bowels get loose or your bowels are not properly formed, that's a big indication of dampness. And if they're strong and smelly, um, then that's a big indication of heat. So if you've got the kind of kind of combine the two, well then you've got that I I indicator of damp heat. Like if, they, if they're loose and you're going frequently, um, and they're not properly formed and they're very strong and stinky smelling, um, then those are generally damp heat. Now other symptoms of dampness, which is common with damp heat, can be feeling lethargic and very sluggish. Right, feeling like you want to lie down a lot or your limbs get very heavy. Um, and the other thing is like swelling or accumulations of fluid um, can happen when you've got dampness and in damp heat that can happen as well. Generally what happens with heat is it, you get the swelling or you get the accumulation of fluids because of the dampness but then because of the heat it tends to have a drying effect so often those fluids would start out being swollen and, and stuck but then they become um, more uh, strong smelling or like your urine might become more strong smelling, your sweat might become very strong smelling um, and those kinds of things. I've had some patients over the years that have come in and said that was their main symptom, right? They were like, well, my sweat has just suddenly changed to a different smell. So um, I'll give you an example of how you can get damp heat. It's simply by eating the wrong kinds of foods. So if you've got a good digestive system and your body's typically healthy, then the main indicator of that is your bowels. I know it's a bit gross to talk about that stuff, but that, that's, that's the way you would tell, the main way, the number one way, is are your bowel movements properly formed? Um, so if they're properly formed, they're easy to come out, you're going once a day, um, the opposite of dampness is kind of dryness. So if you've got constipation and they're hard to get out, dry, pebbly kind of stools, well, that's the opposite of damp heat. And so you wouldn't have damp heat. If you've got dry, pebbly stools, <laughs> you don't have damp heat. So with dampness, it tends to create an inability to digest the foods properly, your spleen and stomach. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, go and watch those ones. So that's what in Chinese medicine we kind of think of as your digestive system. But it's really just your digestive tract, so your physical tr digestive tract. There's nothing mystical or weird about it. But it's just the way that we talk about the metabolism, the metabolic functions of those are functions that are given to the spleen and stomach. So if you eat foods that are hard to digest, then it simply means that those organs are having trouble to digest it. And the outcome is that your bowels aren't properly formed. So that means instead of having like a, let's say, call it a soft sausage um, shaped um, bowel movement that comes out, shaped poo, then it will actually be looser or less and less formed. So the worse it is, the more sloppy and the more hard, um, sort of hard to form it is. So it just comes out very loosely. Now, when you have damp heat, the telltale symptom is... Um, a hot poo <laughs> like it feels warm when it comes out or it's very smelly so super stinky poos now if that's the way that your bowels normally are then perhaps you're eating the wrong foods or foods that are causing you damp heat all the time so if you want to treat damp heat with foods the first way to do it is not to add other foods into your diet right to go oh what are the foods that eliminate damp heat marie it's more about well, what foods are you eating because you shouldn't have damp heat you shouldn't have to eat foods to avoid, to cure damp heat, let's say. You should just avoid the foods that cause it in an acute sense, right? Now, if it's been going on for months and months or longer than that, then you can't just simply avoid those foods and everything go back to normal because your bowels and your digestive system might have changed. And that's when you benefit from seeing a practitioner like an acupuncturist or a herbalist who can kind of help support your body along the way. And so... I know a lot of people with these questions are in that boat. They're seeing a herbalist or an acupuncturist and watching these videos to help them support their body along the way. And that's my job on this channel. That's what I want to help, be able to help you to do. 
So the first category of foods that can cause dampness. Now, if you've watched other videos on this channel, I think I've mentioned this to the person who asked this video about specifically damp heat. Well, dampness is very similar to damp heat in terms of foods to avoid and foods that would help it, except we're simply with the additive of heat. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, but this is kind of a double up on those dampness videos. So foods that cause damp heat also can cause dampness, right? So too much dairy products, particularly when you have anything combined with sweet so dairy and sweet so sweet yogurts so fermented dairy tends to be a lot less dampening a lot better for you if you're going to have dairy than um, you know non-fermented dairy products so the more creamier and the more richer it is so let's say you've got milk as the main source product of dairy um, i'm not suggesting you have to have dairy but some people don't want to give up dairy and they don't necessarily need to but if you have foods that are enriched with cream, creamier sauces, things like that, then those foods would be more dampening the more creamier and the more richer they are, right? Now, if you like the flavor of cream, which a lot of people do who have chronic damp problems, um, you know, I'm one of those people who likes, um, like, uh, like if I'm going to have gravy, I like to put cream in the gravy because it gives it that nice rich flavor. And what you can do instead of putting cream is you can put yogurt. It has a little bit more of a tartar kind of taste. You wouldn't pass any <laughs> MasterChef kind of show with doing this, I guess, but it still has that same kind of a flavor, a similar flavor. Um, so you can cook with things like you can substitute cream for yogurt in lots of time, lots of situations. So the Greek yogurt, again, it's a little bit creamy. And try to avoid at all costs, you know, any kind of dairy mixed with sugar and particularly processed foods. So all processed foods, all foods that are packaged foods that have this additive of salt and sugar added together, that's just a recipe, is a recipe for dampness. So one of the things that um, creates damp heat in an acute stage would be alcohol, right? Now I'm sorry to say this to people that love alcohol, but particularly for people that love beer, and this is more common with men than women because beer is a much more common drink with men and, and drinks like beer and Guinness you know kind of the culprits of this that the the ingredients that they're made out of because they're made out of grains usually and this is the same for low carb beers and it's the same for these gluten-free kind of um, beer substitutes or beer type of drinks but it's probably to a lesser degree if they're low carb and if they're um, gluten-free type of style beers I know I've seen some of those coming out in the, on the market um, then they tend to be less dampening. But in general, all beers and all alcohols, you know, have a dampening effect. But beer particularly, and Guinness even more, has a dampening effect. And the more um, an alcohol becomes like a spirit, the more um, it um, is more heating, right? So in this case, when we're talking about damp heat, you want to kind of avoid both of those. So the alcoholic effect of something, how, how much alcohol something has, how much, how, much, how much proof it is, or let's say um, how many standard drinks it is as that goes up in, in the quantity, the percent of alcohol in a drink. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard to say. Um, that's more heating, it makes the alcoholic products more heating. The more sweet it is, so these kind of mixy drinks, you know, when you get these vodka um, IPAs or whatever they're called, I think they're called that. Um, when you've got these kind of sugary mixtures in the alcohol, um, so particularly like these, you know, soda poppy type of drinks, that is much more dampening than it would be heating, right? But if you've already got a pre-existing damp heat type of condition, you just want to avoid all alcohol at all costs if you can. Your body's going to feel better for that. Now, another example of when you can get damp heat would be when you have a, a food poisoning type of situation, right? So you've actually ingested a toxin. Your body will have a, the same reaction, like the diagnosis from a TCM practitioner can be, a damp heat type of diagnosis. So what would happen is a person, let's say you go away, you go overseas, you go to a country where the food hygiene isn't as good as you would expect or whatever, and so you ingest that food and then you come home and, you, and you're like, you know, you come back to your hotel room and you're like, oh, I don't feel so good, I feel sick. I have a bad case of diarrhea. You're vomiting and you've got diarrhea and you've got a fever. I got a fever. Something like that, right? Then that would be an extreme example of it. And that could be, the treatment for that would be. And the only prescription it's more cowbell. A herbal formula would kind of expel that those damp heat toxins, right? Now, some types of 
um, food poisonings can require like a tonification to happen because your body gets so overwhelmed with these toxins of these foods that because you're sweating, because you've got diarrhea, because you've got vomiting, you're losing fluids in three places, very quickly a person can become depleted and it can be quite dangerous. So this is why like an emergency treatment would be go to the hospital and get an IV fluids. And that can be quite a life-saving treatment, right, for um, some cases where people can't keep any food in and they can't keep any food down. That's super important to kind of get those fluids um, back into the person so that they don't pass away, they don't die from this acute um, extreme situation. But those symptoms of having um, like abdominal cramping with um, this hot diarrhea that's coming out like, you know, <laughs> it's um, that's damp heat. Okay, so those main symptoms of damp heat would be showing in your bowels, the fact that they're smelly they're loose that's the dampness and the smell is the heat so the more the heat that's there the more the smell that's there and this is one of the cases where you would definitely notice a big change on the tongue right so the tongue body which is the the the, the main part of the tongue um like the actual tongue that you see is the body of the tongue now the coating is the sort of the film that sits on top of the tongue now normal kind of coating would be what we call a thin white or a clear kind of coating Right now, a tongue that has no coat is also considered not a healthy tongue, right? So that would be considered a peeled tongue. And that's not a kind of damp heat situation. So you might have gone to a practitioner and say, oh, you've got, if you've got no coating on your tongue, you don't have damp heat. Um, that's not a kind of damp heat kind of tongue. Um, now you could brush your tongue coating away, that's possible. But most of the time with these kind of situations, it's very hard to brush this coating away. It would be very obviously like a, almost like a yellow highlighter is kind of coloured in the tongue if it's true damp heat. Now, sometimes people can get into a situation where they have this chronically because they drink a lot. Like think about an alcoholic, um, that brandy nose that people get, right? So they get the capillaries break out on their nose and they get this kind of red bulbous kind of looking nose. That kind of situation, um, a person is going to have a like more chronic effect in their body from that damp and heat, but they can have like continuously or just long term um, like unconstructed or like not not properly formed bowels and tend to be on the stinky side. Um, and then their tongue coating may be maybe thick and greasy and yellow, but not as as pronounced as this. So if it's an acute situation, the tongue coating is going to get like just go from being normal to suddenly very thick and yellow and greasy and they feel it in their mouth feel very furry so that's another telltale sign of the dampness a kind of a pulse that the person might have you know in traditional chinese medicine could be like a slippery pulse or a rapid pulse um, these are very common um, pulses for like a damp heat kind of situation now um your practitioner is going to like an individual person <laughs> not going to be able to tell what what the hell is a slippery pulse spray what does that mean um it's not up to that's not something that um people can do on themselves it's something where you need a practitioner like being able to determine what's a pulse that's slippery and rapid or or, or um that kind of thing or or just being able to feel a slippery pulse is a that's a practitioner's job right <laughs> so we're not trying to say that you should be able to do that but that would just just in case you were wondering what kind of pulse they might have um and where the position of the pulse is would show you sometimes where that damp and heat is. So the middle part of the pulse position, right? So you, you, the top parts, the top, up, the upper part of your body, the middle position is the middle um, part of your body, like the your digestive area. And so where that slipperiness is sometimes shows the practitioner where that um, where that dampness is. So if it's in the middle jowl, which is like your spleen and your stomach, um, and also your liver and your um, gallbladder kind of area this middle torso part of your body, then it'll be depending on the, what side it is, left or right, um, that can kind of show what's happening there. Um, with a slippery pulse, it's very common, like if you just have general damp heat, it'll be all over, like it'll be the whole pulse is kind of feel like rolling, kind of slippery feeling. So um, that those are the main things with damp heat. Now, what does heat do that's different to dampness? Well, when you have um, damp, think about it like this. Um, Dampness is an accumulation of yin, right? Fluid um, or fat or um, like density of the body. Um, so, you know, when you go away, 
um, for holidays, let's say. <laughs> I don't know if you're going away on holidays now that the virus is, the coronavirus is here. But let's say you go away for a holiday and you leave a glass of water on the bench and you don't come in back in your house for like a couple of weeks. And you come back and that glass of water is still there. But because it hasn't had any movement in it and it's just been sat there, like it's often like um, becoming um, like very stagnant in there, right? So you wouldn't just sip that water down because you would know and it would have a smell to it. It would be like, oh, this is something's not right here. Same as if you leave a vase of flowers there, right? Bacteria and things like that are getting into it. And there's no movement there. There's no freshness or clean cleanliness. <laughs> cleanliness. There's no freshness there. And so it becomes stagnant. And the longer that it's sort of stuck and still and there's no movement, the more stagnancy that happens, the more like it concentrates. And that concentration is what's causing the smell to happen. And that's what happens with damp and heat. So um, it's like dampness is usually the, the perpetrator first, right? And so that, that, that lack of movement um, or that stuckness kind of happens. And this can happen because of the foods, right? So you eat these greasy, rich, heavy foods. Your body doesn't have the ability to kind of mobilize that with its digestive power, let's say, um, because maybe the food is just so overwhelming. You've had way too much of it in a shorter amount of time or your digestive systems are weaker. Like you'd probably notice um, over the lifespan, if you're a younger person, well, when you were a younger person, you have had, you were able to eat more of these dampening and these heady kind of foods with no problem, basically, you know, not too much of a problem. Um, or maybe the way that it showed the problem was a little bit different to how it shows a problem now. And then the same as with alcohol, right? People's tolerance for alcohol is a lot higher when they're younger because they've got all this yang and this ability to digest it. So when you're older and you don't have that ability to digest it, it can cause dampness much quicker and for less and less quantities as you kind of get older. And so what happens then is your body doesn't have the ability to digest that. And so that, that then creates dampness and that dampness is this stuckness and this accumulation. And then because it's kind of contained and it can't be moved, that's when it creates that heat. So the heat is this lack of movement causing stagnation um, and this kind of smell or concentrated fluids. So what could, if damp heat gets into your bladder, let's say in a Chinese medicine sense, the result will be that your urine gets scanty, right? Which means like less urine comes out, but a stronger smell, it's a stronger color. So um, yeah, the, the, the treatment in Chinese medicine can be could be like a flushing out kind of treatment. So these are purgative type of formulas that could be used at a very short term kind of effect. Um, it depend, would depend on the diagnosis of the person's constitution, how long the, the patient has had that problem for, um, and maybe their pulse is a big indicator of their constitution. So you don't want to purge a person, like you don't want to give a person a, a formula that's going to make them have more diarrhea to purge something out. And it also might depend on whether the cause of that dampness is still there. So let's say you went to overseas and you've had that, um, you know, uh, the damp heat happen from the food that was the bad food that you ate. Well, that's a one-off situation. You're not still eating that bad food. Whereas if a person's drinking too much alcohol and eating too many like um, difficult, hard to digest foods and they keep on eating those foods, well, you could do the treatment with the acupuncture or the herbs, but the problem might still be there. So it's good to kind of watch this video if that's you and you're thinking, okay, how could I help this myself? The next video is going to talk about what foods to avoid if you've got damp heat and what foods you should have or what kind of diet you should have if you've got damp heat. So hopefully you click on the next video and I'll see you again soon. If you're not um, a subscriber of the channel yet, make sure you click that subscribe button um, and so you'll never miss a video from me. Thank you so much for watching and click on the next video to find out about the foods for damp heat.